live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to AWS reInvent 2019. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with my co-host, Justin Warren. We're going to talk about data protection, really important topic, uh, particularly in the cloud. Chad Kenny is here, he's the Vice President and Chief Technologist at Clumio, a hot new startup. And to my left is Charlie Gattreau, who's the Senior Director of Cloud Services at Ally. Gents, good to see you. Thank Thanks you very much. Thanks on. for having us. You're welcome. So let's start, Charlie, with you. Tell us about Ally a little bit. Sure, sure. We're um, a 10-year-old financial services company, a digital-only bank, um, multi-cloud at this point. Um, certainly, you know, talking to uh, Chad uh, about data protection quite a bit these days. I think it's a very important topic um, that's actually overlooked quite a bit in the marketplace for us. And yes, we're looking at. so Chad, I mean, uh, exciting days for you guys. Early startup days, you just you know, get a couple of rounds, one sizable you know, financing round, so that's, you got now some dry powder to really go after this opportunity. Um, I first heard of Clumio, um, I met a guy in a plane <coughs> with a Clumio shirt on. <laughs> And he was a customer. I was like, hey, I, you know, Clumio, I've just basically heard of it. And so he was very excited, had him into our studio. So we want to learn more about that. But um, so let's start with backup in, in the cloud. Yeah. And just share with our audience kind of what you guys are all about. There's a, there's a ton of companies out there doing data protection. Sure. Why Clumio? So what Clumio is, is it's a enterprise um, backup as a service solution, uh, highly secure. Uh, built natively in the public cloud on cloud native resources. And uh, we really felt that backup was just this complex solution of a lot of hardware, a lot of different resources and time spent. And it was really low hanging fruit to move to the cloud in a full SaaS based solution. There's been so much SaaSification going on in the enterprise as a whole that this has seemed like a perfect spot for people to be able to take advantage of the cloud and longer term actually get value from the data sets that they're actually backing up in one common platform. I mean, it's kind of surprising, isn't it, that it's taken so long. I mean, it started with CRM, I guess, and then of course email went yeah. to SaaS, and you had service management, which is a kind of a big heavy lift. You know, data warehouses now in the cloud, so it seems like a logical move to put, put SaaS in the cloud, but I wonder if you could share with us what you guys are doing in you know, cloud generally. You guys all cloud? A cloud sure, native sure. company? Or? You know, I, I would say we're about two years on the journey at this point. Um, we, you know, we started out uh, very much on the IADS you know, side of the house, I right. think like a lot of folks. Um, more recently though, over the last few years, we're slowly shifting more towards cloud native services for most of our applications that we're releasing. Um, certainly a large part of that for us is data management in general. Um, where do we put the data, how do we store it, classify it, recover it, those sorts of things. Um, and certainly our, our application portfolio is shifting uh, quite a bit from your know, traditional um, software packages in the data center to more cloud native services that either we build or that we buy um, as a SaaS product. So certainly you know, the SaaS feature, if you will, of, of Clubio is very, very interesting to us in that model, in that delivery model. It, it's interesting, Charlie, how you describe it is, is not, you didn't describe it as backup, you talked about data management, you talked about you know, how do you categorize it, and so you think, people are thinking about a, a data protection in a different way, it sort of transcends backup yeah. these days. Maybe you could elaborate yeah, on I, that. Yeah, I definitely think it's, it's broader than backup. Um, we don't actually use that term too much, um, even in, in, in my space. Um, you know, to, to us, it's, it's all about availability, uh, recoverability, and durability, right? And all three of those things, along with how you overall manage your data, um, I think we saw some announcements even today on that, are, are a big piece of the, the story for us. So it's not only about backup, um, but certainly that's, that's one component. Um, so one theme we've had from the show so far, certainly a lot today, has been around transformation. So you know, backup is a pretty traditional kind of idea. It's been around for a very long time. Yeah. People have had a go at transforming this a couple of times. So maybe Chad, you can yeah. give us a bit of a flavor of what is it that Clumio is doing differently that, that is transformational here? Or is, is it transformational or are you just basically doing the same stuff but with some cloud rubbed on it? Yeah, I think you know, if you look at the past, a lot of the solutions were iterative approaches. It made it simpler to deploy, maybe add some new features to it, but it wasn't fully transformative to actually move it to the public cloud. And what we've done here is, is we've fundamentally built an application 100% on cloud native resources, which are highly scalable. 
And it's, it's not your just make it easier to consume where you pay for the cloud services and then there's a new consumption model by capacity. This is fundamentally an entirely authentic SaaS solution um, built in the public cloud. And the value that you get with it is the data structures that traditionally were built for backup never really were suited to do a lot of other things on top of it. Our vision is, is that data backup provides the ability to consolidate data into one common platform, but there are a lot of data services you can provide on top of it. I always jokingly say like, the backup guy actually had all of the data in one spot and the trends that happened within that data, but the platform never gave him the ability to be able to leverage and get value from the, the data set itself, and the cloud gives us that. If you were to build a product today, you would build it 100% on the public cloud for the agility, the competitive advantage you get. It's very tough for people though to switch from the model of the old into the model of the new, and so we have the, the advantage of building from the cloud up and taking advantage of all of the you know, amazing innovations. Look at, look at what's out here, the amount of innovation here is it's amazing. Just walking around seeing all of it, it's really because people can get in quickly innovate fast and bring value to customers. Well, it's interesting in what you're saying about transformation because if you think about the sort of post-mainframe era, and by that I mean the era in which mainframe wasn't the be-all, end-all, it was, you know, you had an application, you'd stick it on a, you know, whatever, Unix box or whatever it is, and you'd figure out how to back it up. Okay, and then virtualization came along and that forced everybody to rethink how they were doing data protection. And now, then cloud comes along and, and it, it, it's really an opportunity to transform, and I guess what I mean is, you've had a lot of entrance into the space with a lot of money, but they're sort of entering in a hybrid sort of model. You the guys cloud is fundamentally different than what, what it was before. It's like even yeah. a, a VM is like, well it's basically still a server, so we're still yeah, kind right. of anchored to this older yeah. way of doing things, but the You cloud, just have less physical resources, and so you had to think, right. think that a little bit, but, but you guys are coming at it completely differently. Saying, okay, we're going to put the control in the cloud. No, and no data appliance. Plans. Yeah. Control plane, data plane, right, everything. Right? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's an entirely new world. If you look at where data resides today, it's private cloud, public cloud, SaaS-based solutions. Pretty much everyone's got the private cloud backup thing down to a science. Yeah. It's all of the other things that are actually pretty challenging to deal with. And you know, that's where we're innovating in. We believe that the world is shifting heavily towards SaaS. We're already seeing that in the market growth numbers. Much, many people are getting a competitive advantage of refactoring towards cloud. And so we want to help them protect their, their data assets along that journey. Um, and it's exciting because a lot of the innovation is being done there. Uh, and we're not trying to innovate into the last 20 years worth of stuff that everybody else has kind of built around. Yeah. So Charlie, you mentioned you're about two years into your transformation journey. So okay, walk us through, how does, how does something like Clumio and this different way of thinking about, about data protection and, and data management, how does that, that jo uh, join in to the way you think about that transformation journey? Yeah, sure. Uh, taking just a little bit of a sidestep on that for a moment, um, I think one of the key components and key tenants to any of our transformation has been um, making sure that we do it in a way that doesn't disrupt the business, right? right. Um, and all, you know, all of the new innovations we're seeing in the cloud space are very transformative, but they're also disruptive in how applications are deployed and built. Um, and we're looking at it from a, you know, if, if we're going to deploy to AWS, for example, um, I, I don't want my backup to be in the same place that I'm running my application, right, um, necessarily. Um, I want another provider or another solution to actually own that air gap for me. Um, and especially as we look um, at you know, multi-cloud, maybe it's Amazon, maybe it's something else, um, you know, we don't want to, to be locked in to one provider in that sense. So from a transformation perspective, for us, it's, it's all about that uh, availability from, from my perspective. Right, we, you do mention multi-cloud there, which is a bit of a verboten word, it's a certain <laughs> choice. Um, not on the cube. Yeah, not on the cube. <laughs> so, so, talk to us about that a little bit. How do you, what do, where do you see the benefits of multi-cloud? So, and when you say multi-cloud, what is it that you mean by that? How do you think about multi-cloud? Yeah, sure. From, from my perspective, multi-cloud is, is a couple components. One, you, know, you mentioned you know, SaaS and other options that we have data out there, and you know, maybe our CRM solutions, right? Um, multi-cloud from a, I'm either hosting data or executing the data in some application fashion. Um, to me is, is exactly what I was really talking about. So whether it's you know, Office 365, whether it's some type of CRM, Azure, Amazon, uh, Google, anything else um, is what I was referring to. Um, I think that you know, it, it's certainly, we're in, a, we're in an era where um, single provider is not really an option uh, for the long run, right? So. so 
in thinking about, you mentioned air gap, right? So the ransomware is obviously a, a hot topic. Do you think about that differently with, with a cloud data management, data protection solution than you would with sort of a conventional approach, or how, how do you, how do you yeah, think I, about that? I do, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, um, we were having a conversation uh, earlier about this. You know, companies used to um, you know, have my data in my, data, in, my, um, in my server farm, I back it up and I replicate it to another site, it's a huge air gap, right? Um, and then all of a sudden we put data in the cloud and we kind of forgot about that, uh, at least is what I see. Um, and, and, and so I, I think we have to kind of reintroduce that, that mindset again. Um, and I, I don't see a way that, you know, forward without that type of mindset, really. So you mentioned the SaaS model was attractive to you. Yeah. What, what, about, what about, is there anything unique about pricing that you guys can share with us? Um, whether it's the, 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 the overall cost or the way in which pricing is done in the cloud, is, how important is that to you as a customer? Certainly very important. You know, I think, um, you know, prior to any of the SaaS solutions or pay as you go, it was large upfront costs, right? You usually even had to pay beyond that because you, you needed the growth room, right? So for two or three years, your actually costs were higher than they needed to be. Um, so from my perspective on, on the pricing model for Clumbio, or solutions even like that, it, you know, we want to make sure that we pay as we go. Um, and, and, and really, yeah. Yeah, some interesting stuff that we've been seeing, at least in the public cloud side of the house is, you know, retention periods are defined by the budget somebody has to store snapshots. Yeah, yeah. The business requirements on, in, the, in the private cloud is based upon the business requirements. And the challenge with that is, is that you have this inflated cost at long-term durations. And we give some predictability to that, and so there's a big value there. But the, the, the big one that we talked about a lot earlier is having data reside right next to your backup or even having to manage all of that across many different accounts. The whole concept of having an air gap solution enables you to not only have disaster recovery capabilities into any of your AWS accounts, but also be able to actually protect against malware or data loss from you know, bad actors or, or, or whatever else. And um, there's huge value to that for consumers to have it out of their environment. And then the last part is, if you look at what happens in the enterprise, you have single file restores that occur constantly, not full volume level restores, which snapshots give you the ability to do. And so Clumio's been able to index the data at a file level, have a Google search-like functionality, be able to restore it to any of the accounts. Mm -hmm. So that full functionality that enterprises demand is really what we're trying to deliver in the public cloud as part of this offering. And, and Obviously, you're in the marketplace today, or are you working on getting it? We're not, we're working on it. Okay. Uh, we'll be a, a private listing. Okay, great. So, okay, so how's that work? So if I want to engage, um, I'm an AWS customer and I want to try out Clumio, how, how do I do that? Yeah, so engaging with our, our sales team, so reach, reach out to uh, you know, contacting us and we're happy to come out and show you a demo. The great part about SaaS is you can get up and running literally within 15 minutes. It's almost kind of comical. Um, and we deploy a cloud connector in your environment, inventory the data, you decide what you want to back up. One of the cool parts too is, is as you have more and more data sources across SaaS, private cloud, and public cloud, you can apply the same policies across all of them. So the power of that is really huge to be able to define kind of consistent business practices across all of your data set. So we're excited to talk to customers about it. And presumably you can make it granular, I can, for one workload, I can have a you know, different R RPO, RTO than other workloads. You can define by a whole bunch of different types. So in, in the cloud, everyone uses tags. So everything's really defined by tags on the policy. In VMware, it's more defined by cluster, or maybe foldering, or those types, and we support all of them. So you can create different policies by different ways that the customers constructed their environment. Right. Okay, uh, last thoughts on uh, things you've seen at uh, reInvent this year that uh, are exciting you? Or? Wow. Yeah, so many announcements, right? I think um, just the pure velocity of innovation is, is exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it's hard to kind of put it into one thing. We were talking about this earlier. What's the big announcement? It's not one, there's, you know, 50. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, there's a big theme of transformation, but, yeah. but uh, uh, Chad, we'll leave it with you. You're the new kid on the block. <laughs> exciting times for you guys. We're, we're excited to be here. This show is like electric. Uh, yeah. You know, the, um, the scale of it's almost uh, intimidating, just even walking around, but, um, you know, we, we, we've been roaming around the booth just to see the amazing innovation. I think one of the coolest things is just, people are able to develop quickly and bring value to customers, and, uh, we're excited to continue to do that. The new round of funding will get us to really be able to expedite a lot of the data sources that we uh, wanted to continue the platform on. And uh, 
We're uh, excited to be here next year even bigger with more and more stories to tell. All right, well Charlie, congratulations on the innovation that you're in, and Chad, we're looking for good things from you guys. Very awesome. exciting time. So Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys Thank coming you. on, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break, Dave Vellante for Justin Warren. You're watching theCUBE from reInvent 2019 in Las Vegas. We'll be right back.